South America was once home to a variety of animals unmatched by any place in the world today. Early South American settlers would have encountered creatures of incredible size and power. Imagine an animal as large as an elephant, capable of standing on its hind legs and swiping at other animals with massive claws. Picture an armoured beast twice the weight of a Volkswagen Beetle, and an animal as big as a rhino unlike any creature alive today. Let's explore the incredible megafauna that roamed South America in 10,000 BC. To clarify, we'll use the definition of megafauna as species weighing over 46 kg or 100 pounds. Starting with bears, there were two species of Arctotherium, meaning bear beast. The larger, Arctotherium tigens, weighed up to 400 kg or 880 pounds, which would make it the third largest bear species if it were alive today. Its smaller cousin, Arctotherium wingae, weighed up to 150 kg or 330 pounds, similar in size to the only bear in South America today, the spectacled bear, which would have once competed with these two species. Arctotherium species were omnivores and would have hunted many of the animals we look at in this video. They had teeth that suggest bone crushing ability, which is something typical of scavengers. Let's talk about the armadillos. There were at least 10 giant species in the armadillo family, reaching sizes that are hard to fathom when we see their little relatives today. The largest were the Glyptodons, weighing over two tons, twice the weight of a VW Beetle. With spiked tail clubs and thick armoured bodies, they resemble the Ankylosaurus, a dinosaur which many of you will be familiar with. Archaeologists have found evidence of Glyptodons hunted by humans, with remains discovered near ancient settlements, showcasing the incredible encounters between early settlers and these armoured giants. In the canine family, the biggest was the Direwolf. These massive dogs weighed up to 80 kg or 175 pounds. The average direwolf weighed about twice the weight of the average grey wolf that lives today. The direwolf's larger head and jaws give it a bite force much stronger than any living dog, making it a formidable predator of its time. While no other canine in South America qualified as megafauna, many smaller canines, like the Argentinian wara, a relative of the recently extinct Falklands Island wolf, were present. The canines we know today, such as the maned wolf, the tallest canine in the world, and the bush dog, a stocky pack hunter capable of taking down the continent's largest animal, the tapir, were also present. These modern day canines would have steered well clear of the direwolf. There were two horse relatives, Equus neogeus, similar in size to the plains zebras, and Hippidian saldiasi, a smaller, now extinct lineage. Both would have been prey to bears, direwolves and big cats, which we'll discuss shortly. It's thought that the closest relative of Equus neogeus would be Shevalsky's horse, rather than zebras or wild asses, whereas Hippidian saldiasi's lineage was a sister group to the equines of modern times. No native South American equines survive today, but there are feral horses, like the Baguales of Patagonia, which have lived wild for 500 years and are now preyed upon by pumas, restoring a wildlife interaction that had been lost to the continent for thousands of years. All the reptile megafauna that were alive in South America 10,000 BC are still alive today, such as the heaviest snake in the world, the green anaconda. There are many caiman species, but only three of them are big enough to be classed as megafauna. The Acara caiman, broad-snouted caiman, and the biggest of them, the black caiman, which weighs up to a whopping 500 kg or 1100 pounds. There are also two huge crocodile species in South America, the Orinoco and American crocodiles. The Orinoco gets to a similar size as the black caiman, but the American crocodile can get absolutely gigantic weighing over 1 ton or 2,200 pounds. It's fascinating to think that these massive reptiles battled entirely different animals when humans first arrived in South America. There were two Gomphothere species at this time, Cuvieronius hyodon and Notiomastodon platensis. Gomphotheres, relatives of modern elephants, were massive animals with many different species. They once roamed every continent except Australia and Antarctica. The species in South America at this time, Cuvieronius and Notiomastodon, resembled modern elephants rather than the more unusual Gomphotheres, like Gomphotherium, which had four tusks. As humans are thought to be the reason for the extinction of these species, many have suggested introducing elephants to parts of South America as proxies for their extinct relatives to fully restore the function of the ecosystems. It's believed that Cuvieronius and Nodiomastodon were similar in size to today's Asian elephants. However, South America also had an even bigger animal to greet the first humans, which we'll discuss later in the video. Along with the Guanaco and Vicuña, there was another laminoid species on the continent, Paleolama major. It's thought that this species could have weighed as much as 300 kg or 660 pounds, more than twice the weight of the guanaco, the largest wild laminoid today. The Paleolama was a stockier animal than its lighter cousins, but still would have been prey to the many South American large predators. 
There were seven megafaunal deer species. Five of them are still with us today. The red bracket, South Andean deer, taruca, white-tailed deer and marsh deer. The two extinct species, Antifer ultra and Morinolaphus brachyceros, would have been the two largest deer species, weighing up to 200 kg or 400 pounds. Like most of the animals in this video, it's thought that humans hunted these two deer species to extinction. Two very unusual animals from lineages completely wiped out today were Xenorhinotherium bahiens and Toxodon platensis. Their relationship to modern animals is debated, but they belong to a clade known as the South American ungulates. Today, there are two orders of ungulates. The odd-toed ungulates, which includes rhinos, tapirs and horses, and the even-toed ungulates, which include cattle, goats, deer, giraffes and other hoof mammals. The best evidence suggests that the South American ungulates belong to neither of these orders, but their closest living relatives are likely the odd-toed ungulates. Xenorhinotherium bahiens translates the strange-nosed beast of Bahia. This name aptly describes them, as they had long, saiga antelope like noses, resembling something out of Star Wars. These large animals weighed up to almost a ton, or about 2,100 pounds. Even bigger was Toxodon platensis, which looked somewhat like a rhino, but was only very distantly related. This similarity likely arose through convergent evolution, where animals evolved similar traits because they occupy similar niches. Toxodon platensis weighed approximately 1,400 kg or 3,100 pounds, about the same size as the black rhino of Africa. Now for the felines. Alongside the jaguar and the puma, the third and fifth largest living cats today, was Smilodon populator. This species was the largest saber-toothed cat that ever lived, even bigger than its North American cousin, Smilodon fatalis. Some argue that it was the largest cat that ever lived, surpassing even the American lion. Smilodon populator was likely the top predator on the continent, being the largest alongside the bigger Arctotherium bears, which were omnivores. The exact purpose of Smilodon's huge canine teeth is unknown, but it's suggested they used them to deliver a killing bite to the throat or back of the neck of their large prey. There was also a subspecies of jaguar endemic to Patagonia, Panthera anca mesembrina, which was twice the weight of modern jaguars, making it even bigger than African lions. Other remarkable cats in South America included the jaguar undi and the ocelot, which hunted smaller prey and continue to do so today. The largest living South American animals are the tapirs. There are three species, the mountain tapir, beard's tapir, and the largest, the South American tapir, which weighs up to 320 kg, 705 pounds. It's remarkable to think that these animals, now the biggest in South America, were relatively small prey species when humans first inhabited the continent compared to the massive animals they once lived alongside. Another modern day megafauna that lived in 10,000 BC is the capybara, the largest rodent in the world. Back then there were multiple capybara species, but now there are just two. The capybara, which weighs up to 66 kg, 146 pounds, and the lesser capybara. Some other notable large South American animals that lived then and now are worth mentioning, despite not being megafauna. The harpy eagle, the heaviest eagle in the world, which flies through treetops, catching unexpected monkeys and sloths. The rhea, known as the South American ostrich, is the largest bird in the Americas today, and would have been the largest bird on the continent in 10,000 BC as well. There were and still are many monkey species in South America. I'm not certain what the largest monkey would have been at the time, but the biggest surviving today is the woolly spider monkey, which can weigh up to 15 kg or 33 pounds. There are three species of peccary in South America, with the largest being the Chacoan peccary, weighing up to 40 kg or 88 pounds. Peccaries are cousins to the pig family. They travel in massive herds, sometimes numbering in the hundreds, and are important ecosystem engineers. Now, onto the biggest animal on the continent. There were at least eight species of huge ground sloth in South America at the time. The smallest of them being about the size of modern day lions, and the largest, Megatherium, weighing up to 5 tons or 11,000 pounds. For perspective, only the largest Asian bull elephants get to weights over 5 tons today. Ground sloths weren't just large. Megatherium had claws almost a foot long and could have killed most predators with one swipe. Despite their name, they wouldn't have been particularly slow moving. Their name derives from their closest living relatives, which are the sloths we see in trees today. Ground sloths were omnivores, eating mostly plants but have also been opportunistic meat eaters. They not only shaped the vegetation through their feeding habits, but also played a crucial role in seed dispersal. Some tree species in the Americas, like the Joshua tree, have actually been struggling, and it's thought that this is because of the extinction of giant ground sloths and other megafauna, who ate the large seeds and then dispersed them elsewhere in their feces, 
allowing the trees to spread and grow. It's amazing to think that the animals we see in South America today and human settlers lived alongside these giants. We can only imagine the beauty and the awesomeness of the continent that once was. If there are any cool facts or animals I missed out on, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.